Hi, welcome to Car Mechanical. In part five of the Honda gearbox change, we're going to be removing the engine support, putting the subframe back in, reconnecting all of the suspension, and putting the drive shafts in. Right, so to start with, we've had the engine propped up uh, with some jack stands underneath, but now the engine is reconnected to the gearbox and all the gearbox mounts are back on, we can start to take some stuff away and not worry about the engine dropping. So with those out of the way, what we're going to do now is going to undo the engine support. So this is nice and quick, so I'm going to speed ahead here. We're going to take the support off, so I've undone the nuts that hold it on the side. and lift that over, then I'm going to take the chain off and we're going to take off the uh, box sections as well. And then we can crack on with everything else. Right, so we're going to put the subframe back in. Whilst I had the subframe off, I cleaned it up, I gave it a quick lick of paint. So it's not perfect, but just gave it some rust protection. And we're going to push it under, and again, I'm going to use this uh, gearbox jack that I ended up making uh, just to get it into place, pushing it over these stones, which wasn't the best idea. Um, but this allows me to position it and to line the bolts up and to get everything into place. So to start with, I sort of loosely get all the bolts in on both sides. Just want to make sure it's nice and lined up. And then I tighten them. And another thing, uh, we'll come back to this, but once it is all back together, and once you have test driven it, it's worth going back over these, make sure they all are properly tightened up whilst the suspension has a chance to settle and everything can move around. So we've got the four main bolts, so two either side that hold the subframe in. Right, so we're going to put the power steering pump back on. Luckily, I have this tool from working on the Audi previously, and I just used it to line the bolt holes up, basically, just to make sure everything was where I wanted it to be. So that lined up, I was able to put the bracket on and put these two bolts in nice and quickly, and that gets the power steering pump back into place. So we're going to quickly do that up. Okay, then we're going to reattach the steering rack. So again, using all the extensions that we had, luckily it's much easier to put everything back on, especially when you know the selection of extensions and wobble joints and everything that you need to use. Next up is the gearbox mount. In fact, the gearbox mount is next to that. But we're going to do these uh, bits up the other side of the power steering pump. And then there's the gearbox mount. So I mentioned before, inspect your mounts whilst you have them off the car. Um, it's as good a time as any to take them off and replace the bushings. And you can see from the angles I was working out here, this can be a bit of a pain. Uh, luckily with the right selection of sockets, you can get it done. And with that, the subframe is reconnected and all done up. Remember just go around and give everything its sort of final tighten. And again, it might be worth it after it's been driven just to make sure any vibrations and things have come out that everything's okay. So we're going to reconnect this last subframe bolt just underneath the gearbox mount. And that subframe fully on, we're going to put the drive shaft in. Right, the next thing that caught me out and ended up going through a number of drive shafts was putting the drive shafts back in. Putting these in themselves is simple. You place them into place, you pop it in, put the hub back over it, you tighten it up, should be job done. Unfortunately, uh, one thing I neglected to do was to replace the circlips. Now, uh, on this side, this drive shaft actually lasted longer, uh, but eventually it did go. And what it is, I think the circlips are between five to 10 pound from Honda. They're only intended a single use. Um, you can sort of see here what happened by not buying new circlips. It just chewed up the end of the drive shaft where it popped in, and the circlips were a bit loose. I ended up going through five drive shafts on one side. There was the original one that was on there. There was the replacement one we bought, so it didn't look very good. Um, then I ordered one for the wrong type of jazz, so that's been sold on. And, you know, it, it's just worth replacing that little circlip. It only cost a couple of pounds. It will save you a lot of hassle down the road. So, I'm going to put the drive shaft back through the hub. I'm going to put the hub nut back on it. We're going to loosely tighten it at the moment. We don't need to fully tighten it. And then, when we put it back on the car, we'll stake the hub nut. Also, oh, when we put when we have everything sort of finally tightened. So with that done, we can put the anti-roll bar back in, the anti-roll bar link. So again, depending on how these are, you might need to use a hex piece. Uh, it's basically, I think it's 15 or 17 mil on the inside and a 
it's 15 on the inside and it's 17 on the outside, you just tighten it up. That's the anti roll wire link back on. We need to put the lower ball joint back into place. So these just push out under and in. Then you put the nut back on top and then you need to put a split pin in as well. The split pins you take out might have been okay. It's five pound for a box of brand new split pins and it's worth getting. Make sure that you rotate this nut in such a position that you can get the split pin easily. So you can notice that we didn't have to take the hub off because the lower ball joint's out. So we didn't need to remove it from the strut. Uh, so we put this drive shaft back in. And don't worry about the rust on the discs. This cleaned off really quickly after the first couple of uses. But where we left these in place, we hadn't tightened them. So we need to go around both sides and tighten up both these struts to the hub. And we're just putting in the other side's ball joint. Might take a little bit of manipulation. You might notice on the earlier video, I beat the crap out of this trying to undo it before I got the um, ball joint splitter on there, but we did end up using a thread cleaner, uh, a sort of tap and die kit, and we basically cleaned up the thread on the end of this, so it was okay. We'll get that nice and tight, and then we're gonna put the split pin through as well. If you can help it, try not to have it at that angle, but you can get in there with a screwdriver and split it and get it round. So the other anti roll bar link, we're going to do that one up. Again, as I mentioned, some of these require a ratchet and a spanner. Some of them uh, require a spanner and a hex piece. And that's it for part five. In part six, we're going to get everything else back together and have the car back on its way.